Global warming. With increasing temperatures, humidity, and changing precipitation patterns, the world is very quickly changing. Developed countries are more at risk for negative consequences, including putting the youth at risk for nutrition development and cognition delays. Increasing temperatures means increasing amounts of infectious diseases occurring in places they haven't occurred before. For example, Zika, which is normally just found in the southern hemisphere, has the potential to migrate further north and also lengthen the transmission period. Waterborne infectious diseases are also more likely to be spread due to the increased amount of precipitation and contamination of water. There are countries that are currently working on developmental projects for creating solutions to monitor and control infectious diseases that are impacted by climate change. Solar cells. Solar cells collect sunlight and convert it to electricity by using a variety of designs. There are organic solar cells, which use a semiconductor that lay between two electrodes. There are also perovskite solar cells that use the photovoltaic effect to convert energy to electricity. They use two main types, which include wafer-based silicone and thin film cells. Perovskite cells are a higher cost than other types of solar cells, although the price is decreasing as the demand increases and the technology continues to develop. They convert about 20% of sunlight to electricity, but have the potential to increase efficiency, which is helpful with the technology that is developing. Solar cells lack toxic components, have low carbon footprints, and high environmental compatibility. Wind power. There are many types of wind turbine designs, but the multi-rotor turbines are the most productive. This is because more energy is produced for less cost, and then also they can continue to work even if one of the rotors stops working. Wind turbines produce no radioactive waste, air pollution, or water pollution. Wind power is clean, simple, affordable, and localized. Wind farms require areas with high wind, buildable locations, proximity to transmission, and must be geographical ideal. Barriers can be difficult to overcome. This includes planning and obtaining permits that can take a while to complete, and that land use for wind farms is often resisted by communities. Wind farms are placed far away from each other, at least 40 kilometers, to avoid wave wakes from occurring and disturbing other wind farms. Wave wakes occur when large amounts of wind slowly pass through the turbine blades. This can disrupt the amount of energy that is produced. Nuclear power. Nuclear energy is the splitting of atoms of certain elements to create an energy source. The most likely source being used is uranium. Nuclear energy was originally studied to create weapons such as nuclear bombs, but the focus has been moved to using it as a renewable resource. Over 10% of the world's power comes from nuclear energy. One of the biggest concerns with nuclear energy is the origin and the fear of continuous weaponization. Nuclear power has almost no air pollution, reduces the amount of CO2 emissions in the air, and has low cost compared to the energy output. The safety risk is the biggest concern of nuclear energy. The stability of nuclear energy is unpredictable and may be affected by uncontrollable events such as earthquakes. While safety measures have been put in place, this is still risky. Biofuels. There are three generations of biofuels. The first generation consists of crops, palm oil, vegetable oil, animal fats, and more. The second and first generations are less environmentally friendly than the third. There is a negative impact on the food market, food prices, land use, soil erosion, and deforestation with these generations. The third generation includes algae and has the best environmental benefits. Algae only needs the correct amount of sunlight, temperature, salt, and pH to survive. There has been technology developed that has genetically engineered algae to adapt to these needs. Algae as a biofuel decreases the amount of CO2 in the air because it absorbs it and then uses it in addition to sunlight to grow. Algae does not require high land mass to grow, it is typically grown indoors. This does require power plants, factories, and water treatment facilities to grow this algae. It can be expensive due to the need of heat sources, light sources, CO2, and other necessary nutrients. Biofuels are able to be sustained forever, but they are not the most sustainable resource available. They do re 
reduce greenhouse gas pollution, decrease the amount of petroleum resources used, and decrease the dependence on foreign suppliers. Hydroelectric power. Hydroelectric power is one of the oldest renewable resources used by the United States. It accounts for nearly half or 41% of the renewable resource usage in the United States. Although hydroelectric power usage has started to take a decrease as other renewable resource usage has started to increase. Cost and maintenance of hydroelectric power plants are some of the biggest challenges faced with this resource. Hydroelectric power works best when there is a large stream of continuous water, such as a river, that has a large elevation drop. Gravity causes water to go down into the dam. The dam stores the water in a reservoir and leads to a turbine. The turbine, which is connected to a generator, is moved by the falling water. The generator produces electricity, which is carried through power lines to the necessary location. If the, pump, if the plant uses the pumped storage method, it has an additional reservoir that is used to reuse water during peak energy times and save water during times of low demand. In addition to dams, wave and tidal power also falls under the category of hydroelectric power. These are both new forms of renewable resources. Tidal power is more established than wave power because tides are predictable due to the gravitational forces of the sun, moon, and earth while waves are not as predictable. The design also uses a turbine to create electricity but have more challenges than land-based hydroelectric power plants. They're extremely expensive due to the difficult design, installation, and maintenance of these mechanisms. Hydroelectric power as a renewable resource is extremely geographically based. You have to have a large source of water, the correct amount of precipitation to avoid a drought, and land must be available to be used. Land usage can be kind of a sensitive topic due to both the limited amount of land that's available for hydropower usage and the displacement that occurs for both ecosystems and communities. Hydroelectric power, though, does create clean energy by using a natural resource that is widely available. So why did I choose hydroelectric power? Two main reasons, really. So the first one being this summer, my dad and I drove from Ohio to California, and on the way there, we stopped at the Hoover Dam. I had a really great time. It was really the time of my life, the best part of the trip for some reason. I got to go on a renewable resource tour of the Hoover Dam, see all the mechanisms, see how everything worked, and it was really educational and really awesome to see how you could actually go through and see how everything worked. Another reason was while I was studying in Iceland, I learned a lot about hydroelectric power and how they use their geographical resources, such as all their waterfalls, all the available big bodies of water that they have to their advantage, and how they're able to run on over 99% renewable energy, mainly being hydro and geothermal power. What is the best option of renewable resources? So in my opinion, there is no singular best option of renewable resources. The best thing to do for the future of sustainability for our planet is to use all of the renewable resources we have available to our advantage. Yes, geographically, some resources do work better in some places than others, and that should be their prime use of renewable resource. But the United States using a mixture of renewable resources is the optimal option. The United States has the potential to run on over 80% clean energy, probably more than that though, due to the variety of renewable resources. But they don't. The current government administration is standing in the way along with the lack of education about renewable resources that this country faces. Using renewable resources is what our future needs to remain optimistic about the future of our planet.